GED students, I had a student email me at lightandsaltlearning at gmail.com. It was Halima, and she was working on the advanced level practice for multiplying algebraic expressions. Now, just to let you know, the advanced level practice has some concepts that aren't necessarily going to come up just this way on the GED, but it's still a great review because um, these particular examples we're going to look at involve a lot of skills that do come up on the GED and kind of put together. So great review. And then of course, if you go to college, you're very likely to see things like this. So let's go ahead and take a look here. This says find the simplified area of the parallelogram below. Now this was number 12 on that advanced level practice. And the first thing that I notice here is I've been asked to find the simplified area, the area of this parallelogram. Nice thing is if you are on the GED, you can just pick up your GED formula sheet and it will tell you how to find the area of a parallelogram. What it says is that the area is equal to the base of the parallelogram times the height. All you have to do is find the base and the height and multiply them together. Okay, so let's do that. First of all, the base of a parallelogram, what is it? Well, the base is one of the sides and it's always the side that goes perpendicular to the height. So let's start with the height here. The height goes from a side to side on a parallelogram at a right angle. So that's the height and then the base is the side there that's at that right angle. So I always look for that kind of T-shape there of those two perpendicular lines when I'm looking for height and base. Those two, the side and then the height that's at a nice right angle. So I can see the measurement of the height. It's three Y, three times some unknown number Y, and that's okay. The base might not be obvious, but remember that parallelograms, the opposite sides are equivalent. So if this is a five Y, this is also a five Y down there. Now I have the information that I need to plug in for my formula. So we said to find the area, we're gonna to multiply together base and height. So it's gonna be equal to, well, what did we say the base was? Five Y. And we're gonna multiply that by the height. And what did we say the height was? Three Y. And now you can see why I included this problem. I love it because it had us practice with GED formulas, but now it's also gonna to have to have us practice here with this GED skill, which is just basically multiplying algebraic expressions. So if I wanna to multiply together five Y and three Y, I'd remember that when you multiply, you basically can multiply in any order you want. So I'm gonna use that to get my coefficients, my numbers first. So five times three is 15. And then I have more than one Y multiplying here. You can see I have one over here and I have another one over there. Remember that we use exponents to talk about repeated multiplication. So how many Y's do I have multiplying? Two. So what I'll write here is not two Y, but Y squared. That means two Y's multiplying. Now, a lot of students right now are freaking out, but what's Y? What's the measurement? What, we don't know what Y is. Nobody ever told us. And so this is as good as we're gonna get. This is the answer. We have 15 Y squared. This is simplified. I can't make it any simpler. And there you go. So let's move on to the next one. Halima also wanted to look at number 13. Okay, so this is what number 13 looked like. And you might say, well, why is this on the multiplying algebraic expressions worksheet? This isn't multiplying algebraic expressions. This is taking some big, ugly, nasty expression and raising it to a power. And I'd say you're right, except for remember what a power means. We just talked about it with the last problem. When you talk about raising something to the second power, one way of thinking about that is you're talking about multiplying the same thing twice. So we can rewrite this as a multiplication problem. We can take this entire expression, negative one third R squared S to the fifth power T, and write it twice, multiplying. That's what square means, that this number is multiplying by itself. So I'm just gonna write the exact same thing again. Negative one third R squared S to the fifth T. And now once again, even though it didn't look like it at first, look at this, all I'm doing is multiplying two big, ugly algebraic expressions. So just one big, ugly number here, one big, ugly number there. No pluses, no minuses, it's just one term. And so I'm just gonna straight up 
just multiply. <laughs> so negative one third times negative one third. Well, a negative times a negative is a positive. And remember when you multiply fractions, you just multiply straight across the top and straight across the bottom. Even if you didn't know that, you could use your GED calculator. So I'd type negative and then put N over D to get a fraction, type one, three, arrow out of my fraction, depress times, and then I could do the same thing. And then times negative, N over D, one, three. So even if you struggled, you could see that it's positive one, nine. And anytime you do algebra like this on the GED, you do get a calculator. Now, we are multiplying together R squared and R squared. And remember what it means when you're multiplying here with these exponents. Remember that R squared, remember that R squared literally means I have R and R already multiplying together. And now I'm saying I'm going to multiply by another R squared. So another R times R. So you can see now I have a total of one, two, three, four R's multiplying. So I have R to the fourth power. Now, same thing with S to the fifth power. Think about what this means. S to the fifth power means five S is multiplying looks like a snake, S, 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 S. And another five S is multiplying. Okay, so for a total of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, S is multiplying. And then lovely, I have a T here and a T here. T times T, that's two T's multiplying, so T squared. And this is as simple as I'm gonna get this, that's done. You say, but what's R, S, and T? I say, I don't know, I have to stop here because R, S, and T are a mystery. This is as much simplifying as I can do. All right, let's look at the last one, number 14. Number 14 says, find the simplified volume of a cube with a side length of one half J inches. All right, I'm just gonna go ahead and draw this. I don't have a picture this time. And I know what a cube looks like. It's kind of like a square, but it's three dimensional. And all three of those dimensions are the same. So the side length is one half J, it's one half J going off in this direction. It's one half J going off in that direction. It's one half J going off in this direction. It's got a length, a width, and a height of one half J. Now, I hope you noticed that it asked you to find the volume, but you might be sad that it says of a cube. <laughs> because if you look at your GED formula sheet, we have a whole section for volume, woohoo! but you're not gonna see cubes, so you might panic. But make a note to yourself if you don't already know this, a cube is just a special rectangular prism. It's the rectangular prism where all three measurements are the same, but it's still a rectangular prism. And so what we're going to do is bust out that formula, the volume of a rectangular prism. Formula sheet says that volume is length times width times height. So what are we doing here? We're basically cubing one half J. We're taking one half J, the length, and multiplying by it again, because the width is also one half J, and multiplying it by it again, because the height is also one half J. And now you can see how this ended up in my advanced level practice. Here it is again. Look at this. And all I have to do is multiply these algebraic expressions here. So again, you can do the one half times one half times one half in your calculator if it's freaking you out. So one over two, arrow out of the fraction times one over two. And I kind of resent the time it takes to do this, guys, because honestly, it's so easy to multiply fractions. It's hard to add and subtract them, but easy to multiply them. But just for you guys who just see a fraction and freak out, I'll do it in my calculator. So of course, one times one times one is one, two times two times two is eight, so I get one eighth. And then how about the J's? I have one, two, three J's multiplying. We use exponents to refer to repeated multiplication. So that's the same as J to the third power. Now we're just finding the simplified volume. I'm just gonna write this as my answer, one eighth J cubed, that is the volume. Now, of course, I could say the volume is, now I'm speaking in a complete math sentence, but it's that other side there that's the simplified volume, one eighth J cubed. All right, we're done. Way simpler than they looked. And as you can see, they are great practices of some things you do need to know for the GED. You need to know how to use your formulas. You need to understand about exponents. Then, of course, you need to be able to multiply algebraic expressions even if you're not necessarily going to see them all in the same problem like you did here. If you have any questions about this or any other GED math concept, be sure to drop it in the comments and I'll do my best to answer it. I just can't stress enough how important practice is to learning math. So don't just stop here at watching a video. Head on over to my website, the GED Math Crash Course. Link is down there in the video description. And get your practice on. Check your answers. Make sure you're ready and prepared come test day. 
And I just want to thank everybody who supports this ministry of helping students who've long struggled be able to finally get their GEDs and pass this test. It really is making a difference. And so thank you to those who support me on Patreon. Thank you to those of you who've bought me a coffee. And if you want to be able to do that, I've got the URLs up here on the screen. And just from the bottom of my heart, I so appreciate you supporting the work that we're doing. Happy learning.